Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video where we're going to be taking a look at background tasks or really the command that, that we're looking at is start job, receive job. Um, and also there is going to be the wait job and stop job as well that goes along with that. But really what these commandlets allow you to do and kind of what the title of this video kind of hints towards is it lets you run things in the background so it doesn't take up processing on your console. Because as you guys have probably experienced, especially with PowerShell, if you have a job that takes a significant amount of time, you kind of lose access to your console window. So let's just take a quick example at something that would cause this. Um, this is going to be a very like simple example. It's not going to be anything super in depth. It's just to really show you guys what's going to happen. And we're going to be able to see the different things that happen later on. Uh, but even just a simple command like the start sleep for the amount of seconds, if we start sleep for 10 seconds, I lose access to my PowerShell console for 10 seconds. Now this will happen even if I do a get ad user command that takes sometimes a get ad user command, depending on what your filter is and what your query and how big your active directory is can take upwards of a few minutes where you just can't perform anything on your PowerShell console, or you might have scripts that you've written that the entire script may take 30 minutes to run, 60 minutes to run. You may start that in a separate PowerShell window and open it and run it, and that would be fine. Nothing's gonna be really interrupted. You can open up another PowerShell window and keep executing. Um, or schedule it as a scheduled task and have it like that as well. But if you want to actually just have a PowerShell console, you can actually easily launch those jobs and then come back to them and see those results when you have the jobs set up. So let's actually take a closer look and let's see how to actually get that set up in PowerShell here. So the first thing I really like to do is just initiate a variable for my job. So we're going to create this as just job, uh, just a, let's actually name it job one here. And we're going to make that equal to a start job. And this, we're just going to make it very simple. We're going to make it a script block. And we are going to go ahead and do our open and closing curly brackets here. And all we're going to do is we are going to do a get process here. So this sometimes can take a few seconds where it will actually take up processing power. You won't be able to use your console for a few seconds. But if I do this, I instantly have access to my console. And if we go ahead and we look at job one, we can actually see that it is a background job and it is currently running. So if we go ahead and we see that it is still running, so we can actually just wait a few minutes, we can even start another job. So if we wanted to do a job two, we can do a start job script block. Uh, let's make this one maybe a little bit more uh, fun here. Let's do a start sleep sec uh, seconds 10. And then we're just going to do an end computer name. So we're just going to get the computer name after waiting for 10 seconds. And then here, if we do a get dash job now, we're going to notice that we have two jobs. So we can actually see that our first job is actually completed. So if we just do job one, we're going to see that it is actually completed. Now, how we can actually get those results back here is actually just by doing job one and we can do a receive job. Now, the one thing you'll notice, I'm going to run this right now, and this is not something that you would actually want to do. You would actually want to assign this to a variable, but I'm just going to not assign it to a variable first, just so you guys can see what actually happens. So if we do this, we get our output exactly like what we would expect. If I just zoom out here so you guys can actually see it maybe a little bit better and see like we get the full output. So we get the full output of the get process. We even get our columns here. So like everything is good. We're just going to zoom back in because it might be a little bit hard to see. Um, so we can actually see that we get all of that. But now 
if we actually rerun this command again, it is actually blank. And that's because it completely, it receives that job and dumps it out. So you do not have that output that that job has is no longer there anymore. So you really wanna start saving those two variables. So what we can actually do here is let's just rerun the job one as a start job get process here. And in the meantime, what we can actually also go do, I don't necessarily need the output for this one because it's just our computer name, but we can go ahead and look at job two. So if we scroll down, there's the name of my computer, which is exactly what we did. And we had it wait 10 seconds before getting that computer name, but I can come back and get it. And while we were doing that, now uh, we should be able to then go ahead and get our job one again. So what I would do is job one data equals job one receive job. We go ahead and we run that. We don't get any output, which is exactly what we would expect because we're storing it to a variable. Now, if we look at what's in job one data, we have our get process info. And now what you might be wondering is, can I still do everything that I would do is if I would have exec executed that in this console? And you sure can. If we do job one data, where a uh, process name is equal MS edge. So anything that's um, the, MS edge here. So we have a bunch of processes here that are running. So we can easily do that. And then we can even easily pipe that again to select ID. And that would be 100% that would just get you the IDs of those processes. So you could fully interact with that data that you get back. So if you do a get AD user in a job, you can fully interact with those AD user objects afterwards, as if you had ran it directly in this console but it's not taking processing time. What you can do is you can run a job, get a bunch of AD users. Maybe you wanna do multiple get AD users. You can launch all those jobs and then get all that data back afterwards and fully get it. Now, let's say you had all those jobs going and you want to wait or see all the statuses on them. As you know, we can already get job and that will go ahead and show us all the jobs. Now you can also do a wait job, which will completely wait till that job will finish. Uh, so as an example here, now this might not be something that you'd want to do because it kind of wrecks the whole job process. But if you have a bunch of jobs going and you know for sure that the one job that's going to take the longest, you want to wait for that one and then just get all the data afterwards. That could be a very good strategy. Um, let's go ahead and let's just run this one here. We're going to do job two. And then let's go ahead and let's do job two. We're going to pipe that to wait job. And then we can pipe that to receive job. And there you go. It's already done um, because it's just waiting for 10 seconds there. Um, so those are things that you can do. Now we've only seen the script block, but the start job does have a lot of other parameters. Um, so it could do a script block. It could also do a file path. So that is where I was saying where if you have a script that you've written, you can easily run that PS1 script as well. And you can even do a invoke command as a job. So let's just take a quick look at that here. So let's do a job three variable, and we're gonna make that equal to invoke command. Now this is a little bit different because we're invoking command instead of start job, but you could do computer name. I'm gonna put in my computer name here. This is a remote computer, and we're gonna do a script block. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the script block. We're gonna do m computer name. So we know for sure it's running on that different computer because we know our computer name right now is desktop dash PPD CTCK. And then we can go ahead and we can provide it a job name here. Let me just minimize this and re-expand it so you guys can see. So we can put a job name here. What I would do is I would just call it remote job. And then all you need to do is put the as job parameter and that will go ahead, instantly give you access to your PowerShell console window once again. 
and we can go ahead and just look at the status we can see that the job's completed we can see the location and we can see that it has more data and we're going to pay attention to this because we i haven't shown you guys what this column becomes but if we do the job three and we go receive job now again i'm not putting these into variables because i'm not going to do anything um, post execution and treating but i would usually store this into a variable especially if you are going to be manipulating that data that you're getting back uh, so once we do the receive job we're going to see that we get the computer name of the remote computer so that is exactly what we would want and then if we go ahead and we look at job three now the has more data is false that means there's nothing there and that's what happens when we do the job three receive job and we get nothing is because it has no more data we've already ingested that data so all of those are very useful the other thing that is very handy to know is that with the start job you can also pass it in credentials so you can easily run jobs as different users so if you're running your powershell console as one user and you need to run a job as an elevated credential but you want to do all the data manipulation afterwards as your own account you can easily provide it extra credentials here as well now what you can do is if you ever want to clear out jobs because as you can see now we have a bunch of different jobs let's say if i wanted to remove all of those jobs here all we can do is get job and we can pipe that to remove job now if we get job we don't have any jobs now one thing to note as well is we're just going to run this other job here and now if we get job we're going to see that we do get one job here if we close this powershell session and we reopen it and we do a get job there is nothing there jobs are session based so if you do close out of your session and reopen your session uh, reopen powershell you do lose those jobs they aren't persistent so that is one thing to definitely keep in mind um, if your powershell session crashes or anything like that you will have lost that but I mean, even if you had ran those commands directly in your PowerShell console, if your PowerShell console closes or crashes, you would have to rerun those. So background jobs are super, super handy, especially if you have certain tasks or certain scripts that can take a long time and you need to do some data manipulation afterwards. Quite a few examples was the AD user, or if you're getting things from event logs, uh, that can sometimes quite take quite a long time uh, to get that data back or like I said if you have a large script that does multiple different things um, and all you necessarily care about is the output once it's done you don't necessarily need to see it run you can definitely start the job and then as you go on throughout your day just kind of check the status see if it's done once it's done maybe you just care about the last code that it spat out and then you could just receive the job and see what it gave you or like I said, if you have scripts that require maybe multiple different get AD user filters with different filters, why execute those one at a time and waiting multiple minutes for each one? Start a job with all of your different get AD user commands or get AD um, computer commands if you have multiple of those to run. And then you just have them all in your PowerShell console and you just wait till they're all done. And then you could just receive all of those contents um, back into your console. Hopefully this helps you guys um, with background tasks and maybe makes your PowerShell consoles a little bit more available to use. So you're not stuck with a hanging PowerShell window where you are now stuck opening up multiple PowerShell console windows or multiple PowerShell ISC windows. You can start using jobs and simplifying and just having less of those windows open. If you guys have any command lists that you guys would like me to take a look at for quick tips, please let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure also, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And also, if you haven't already hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.